So now we're seeing one in two Americans suffer from either pre-diabetes or type two or type two diabetes. And, and that is when you eat wow. too much sugar and starch. And every time you do that, it raises your insulin. Your body becomes resistant to the insulin and so it doesn't work as well. So you need more insulin. Mm -hmm. And insulin does what? Insulin makes you hungry. It makes you store belly fat. It locks the fat in the fat cells and it slows your metabolism. It's like a quadruple threat for your body to gain weight. So it's why we're seeing, you know, and that goes back to what we're growing, right? So why are we eating all this food? That it's because that's the food we produce, mm -hmm. right? And so that's the other part of the problem. So we have the chronic disease, we have the economic impact, and then we're like, well, why do we have this food? So as a functional medicine doctor, I'm always asking why, right? Well, why are my patients sick? Because it makes money, right? Well, no, I'm, yeah, but, but I'm going right, even right. further. Why, like, why I got interested sick? in this? Because as a, why would a doctor care about agriculture and soil and all this crap? Because I, as I was thinking about my patients' diseases, most of them were caused by food and can be cured by food. Mm. So I'm thinking, well, well if it's how many? Are, how many are most of them? Is this like fifty percent, seventy percent, eighty percent of anyone either. that comes in to the hospital yeah. or your patients yeah. who has patient. some type of disease or yeah. some type of sickness? I mean, unless it's like an environmental thing, like mercury or lime or mold. You know, most of the or things, cancer. Cancer. Right. Cancer is caused by food. Really, seventy percent. Seventy percent of cancer is caused by food. And sugar is the number one culprit. Heart can, disease, can, diabetes, can, Alzheimer's, heart disease—the big killers. Are now, by sugar and food. Yes. Yeah. So if you change your diet, you should be able to cure, prevent, those. prevent, or cure sometimes. Sometimes like, cure depends how far yeah. along things are. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. But you can prevent heart disease, Alzheimer's. 100%. Yes, 100 percent. I mean, the studies are there. It's crazy. Even people already have Alzheimer's when they improve their diet, they can wake they get up more and get functionality yeah. back. So, so you've got me thinking. Okay, well, if the patient's disease are caused by food, what's causing the food? It's the food system. And I'm like, well, what's causing the food system? It's our food policies. I'm like, mm. what's causing our food policies? It's the food industry that's lobbying Congress. It's got money. It's the biggest lobby group in Congress is agriculture and food. food. By far. Like, by twice as much as the next uh, lobby group. By like gas and oil or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. And it's like, what? So then I began thinking, well, if I'm going to help my patients, I can't do it in my office. I, I can, it's like, it's like I'm, I'm like in the boat, bailing the boat with a hole instead of plugging the hole. You're, right. You're not so, going to the source. Right. So then I'm thinking, okay, well, what do I need to do as a functional medicine doctor? I need to go to the root cause, right? The root cause and why. And then it became clear to me that it's, it's our, our agricultural system that's driving so much of the problem. And, and the, what we grow has been based on good intentions that were in the 50s and people were hungry. There wasn't enough food. There was a lot of poverty. And so we, we figured out a system to produce an abundance mm -hmm. of starchy calories. So we can have food. So we can starve. have food. And we were great cheap. at it. And we, we have cheap, abundant corn and wheat and soy, which are the commodity crops that are turned into industrial processed food, which is now 60% of our diet. And for every 10% of that you eat, your risk of death goes up by 14%. Yeah, so you're, Crazy. so you're basically you know, feeding Americans a diet that we know is going to kill them. The research is so clear on this. There's no scientific debate, and yet we don't do anything about it because we have these dysfunctional food policies. And then the way we grow the food causes climate change. And we'll get into that, but the number one cause of climate change is our food system. Really? People don't realize that. I didn't know it. I'm like, right. oh, it's oil and you know, gas and all this stuff. I'm like, well, what is it? Is it the trucking? Is it the animal feces? End to end. Is it okay, the... so first of all, deforestation is devastating. Uh -huh. Not only do we like destroy the soil on which we cut down the trees, but the trees are carbon sinks, so we lose that. So they're not sucking in the bad air. They're not sucking and putting in the carbon out good dioxide, air. right? I mean, basically, plants suck out carbon dioxide. That's yeah. what they breathe. We breathe oxygen. They breathe carbon dioxide. So they're the perfect antidote, right? Yeah. And then. The soil also, we're damaging by the way we're farming. Mm -hmm. We've lost a third of our topsoil. Mm. It's responsible, and people don't know this, but of all the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, the loss of soil, organic matter, like healthy, rich soil, is responsible for 30 to 40% of all greenhouse gases currently in the atmosphere since the Industrial Revolution. Does that mean, why is that? Does okay, it like why? suck because, up? Does because, it suck? because soil is, it can hold more carbon than is in the atmosphere right now. Like, there's a trillion really? tons of carbon wow. in the atmosphere, which is a lot. I don't know, a trillion tons, I don't even know how to measure that. Uh, and the soil can hold three trillion tons of carbon. And how does it do that? 
It's an ancient carbon capture technology that is available all over the world, that's free, free <laughs> that uh, can be more effective than all the rainforests on the planet, than all the forests and trees on the planet. It's called photosynthesis. Uh -huh. And, it, and the, if you have like grasslands, for example, like we had big prairies in the United States, they suck down carbon, they breathe it, and they put it through the plants into the roots, feeds the mycorrhizal fungi, which then make healthy soil, feeds the bacteria, and you get this incredibly rich live soil that holds wow. tremendous amounts of organic matter that is carbon, right? I mean, carbohydrates comes from the word carbon, mm. which comes from carbo carbon dioxide, wow. right? Ding, 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 it all connects. And, Interesting. And so we've lost, we were so we don't have the soil for it to consume, yeah. then we, it just bounces off back into the yes. air, I guess, and just, we're just consuming yes. it in other ways. Yeah, and, and, and the soil can hold so much carbon. The UN estimated that if we took the five, of the five million hectares of degraded farmland around the world, if we took just two million of that, and spent 300 billion, which is the total military spend for 60 days mm -hmm. around the world, which is not much. Yeah. 60 days, two months of everybody's military spending. We literally could stall climate change by 20 years. Wow. Because of putting back, back the carbon in, in the soil. Uh, and, and not only that, it holds water. You see, mm -hmm. the, you know, in, in, in Iowa and in the Midwest, did. there was floods that just destroyed a million acres of cropland that otherwise could have been fine if the soil could hold the water, but it just sits on the top where it runs through and we lose all this water. So that when you have a organic matter in the soil, it holds 27,000 gallons for every 1% organic matter in the soil per acre. So it's, it's an incredible water sink, it's a carbon sink, and we've lost all these soils and it's because we're growing these commodity crops in ways that destroy soil. soil. We're tilling gotcha. the soil, we're turning over soil erosion, it runs off into the rivers, uh, it, it, we kill all the life in the organic matter by poisoning it with fertilizer, right. with pesticides, with uh, glyphosate, herbicides, and, and it's, it's staggering. And then we have all these sort of unintended consequences. You know, we, we started growing all this food and we thought this agricultural revolution was great, all these chemicals are great, you know, fertilizer's great, we can do all this good stuff, tractors, big farms, more food, right. feed the world. Uh, it's backfired on us. Wow. And it's producing the worst food on the planet, that's causing devastating environmental damage, staggering climate change. So it's it's the soil loss, it's you said add the deforestation, it's the factory farming of animals, which is should be banned. <laughs> right. It's the transportation, storage, refrigeration, and the food waste. I mean food waste in a lot of waste. Yeah, but well we, we waste forty percent of our food. We really throw That's on our plate, we don't need imagine it. going to the grocery store, buying a bunch of groceries, take and getting home and throwing forty percent of the garbage. The average Americans Waste eighteen hundred dollars of food a year, and it's about a pound a day, uh, and that goes to landfills. The landfills then it rots and creates methane. So you could be a vegan, throwing out your food waste and scraps, and you could be contributing to climate change. If food waste were a country, it would be the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases after the U.S. and China. Wow. Yeah, it's methane to produce, uh, and and we need to compost. We need to have community garden. Like it's always to fix it. But it's, it's like when you look at the whole end-to-end -end food system, it is the number one source of climate change, about 50% of greenhouse gases. And people just don't appreciate that. So why, I mean, if this information is public and it's out there and policy makers are aware of it, they're not, they're they're not, not aware not, of it. No, I, I spent two hours on a sailboat this summer with a senator, a smart senator. He wasn't aware of it. And I, I literally, his jaw was hanging open the entire time. Are they not presented with this research and no. information? No. Because because they got so much money sent to them by well, the lobbyists, probably. Right. I mean, listen, if all the people who are walking their office are Monsanto and Cargill and, you know, McDonald's and Pepsi nice. and like, and they're all donating millions of dollars, I would say billions of dollars, um, they're not hearing the other side of the science. And, you know, how do you, how do you fight that? So, you know, I, I always said deride at lobbyists, but I, I plan on, you know, I'm creating a food fix campaign, which is a nonprofit along with an advocacy organization to start to literally lobby senators, congressmen, wow. key people in the administration around these issues and start to drive policy change. Because in the UK, and you were talking about, I think in Australia, New Zealand, or in, I think in Asia, you were saying that 
you can't do certain things with the food, otherwise you'll go to prison, you'll go to, you know, you'll get killed, <laughs> yeah. you'll... Well, yeah, I mean... Like in the UK, mean, you can, they don't have a lot of these dyes, and, right. You know, right? Yeah, so it's so funny, you know, the FDA, you know, is so influenced by the, the food industry. Um, and, and I was once with the, uh, the, the former uh, head of the Federal Drug Administration, Food and Drug Administration, uh, Peggy Hammer. Former. former. She, she, was, she was, you know, she, but then she was the FDA commissioner. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but now she's former. And I was at the World Economic Forum. I said, Peggy, how, how come um, you know, we have uh, so much trouble with, with uh, getting advances in food labeling or dealing with toxic uh -huh. chemicals in our food or antibiotics in animal feed? Or, you know, it's like, she's like, well, uh, when we try to make too aggressive change, Congress threatens to shut down our funding because of the food lobby. They threaten to f shut it down? Yeah. And then what? Just, if they shut it down, what would happen? Well, they, they, they're limited in their ability to do their job. Oh, and so the man. FTC, the same thing happened. In the 70s, there was a movement by the Federal Trade Commission to have uh, you know, negative edu I mean, I mean, education campaigns around sugar and how bad it was. But the Congress says, we're going to pull all your funding and shut you down if you, if you do this. And so they pull back. So, so uh, yes. you know, in, in the, you know, for example, you asked a question about Asia. Uh, we have this thing called grass, which is generally recognized as safe. So the food additives, we have, you know, we have, you know, thousands of food additives. Um, only about five percent have actually been tested for safety in the U.S. Some of them are grandfathered in, right? Like so, Crisco, for example, trans fat was grandfathered in as a safe food to eat, but it took 50 years for researchers to finally prove to the FDA that it wasn't safe because wow. it was the basis of all processed food, oh. right? Crisco shortening. You know, it shortened your life. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh my right. gosh! And and so they 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 literally had to be sued by a scientist in order to actually turn it into a non-safe substance. Mm -hmm. And then, they, of course, they gave their food industry years and years to get it out of food. So, it's, right. but 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 in this country, there's so many things that are used in our food supply that are banned in Europe, like BHT, butylated hydroxytoluene food additives, uh, various dyes, and something called azodicarbonamide, which is a the softener that makes like bread more like fluffy and soft yeah, yeah. and it was used in subway sandwich our friend Vani Hari outed them and said this is your yoga mat material in your subway sandwich and they got it and pretended out, right? to eat her yeah and she got it out but the FDA still says it's fine to eat right. and in Singapore if you use it and you're a food producer you get a $450,000 fine and 15 years in jail for putting it in the food that same ingredient the same ingredient that anyone can use in the US right in the now. US yes and most of the things that are safe, quote, safe here are banned in Europe. So it's like, yeah, they're not doing their job. And then antibiotics, you know, we have 30 million pounds of antibiotics are used in animal feed, we have about 37 million total. So about 7 million for humans to treat disease and 30 million for animals, why? For growth, it's a growth factor. Right. It makes them fat and it makes humans fat too. And it is used for prevention of, from overcrowding. And, and the FDA says, well, this isn't a good idea. I mean, nobody thinks it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, but they go, well, would you please, pretty please not do it? It was a voluntary guideline that the FDA produced, not mandatory. Please don't do it, yeah. You have to have a vet certify that the animal's sick before you give them antibiotics. Oh, man. And now they, they, they you know, continue to do it and just laugh. You know, they had voluntary, the, 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 the um, FDA, uh, FTC put in voluntary guidelines around junk food marketing. Would you pretty please not advertise <laughs> the bad stuff and advertise more good stuff? It was just voluntary and the food industry went ballistic and had it overturned. So even the voluntary guidelines are nullified. Like, no, wow. Mm. And it just, it's- I it, mean, sugar, I mean, it's like, I'm the first one to raise my hand when I say like, I love sugar and it's my, everybody my biggest does. vice, right? Everybody like I love does. cookies and candies and cakes and brownies and anything you can think of, I love it, right? You know, we, we programmed I don't know why sugar. I don't have diabetes. So much sugar I've had in my whole life. But you I can't be having that much because you look pretty good. <laughs> well, I train hard too, right? I go through waves. And, but as a kid, I would drink like nine, 10 Dr. Peppers a day, I remember. What? Like some days in the summer, you're just sitting you around. You could have been president. It's not what I was. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I would just, I mean, I would run around and, and work out and play sports, but then yeah. I would just drink because yeah. I thought that's but what was eight, on TV. You were 16, 18. You're like, and I was like nine, 10, right? So oh. I was like, but it was... You'd see it on commercials like your NBA superstar yeah. drinking Dr. Yeah. Pepper or Sprite or whatever after on the basketball court. 
And I don't know if it was just like subconscious or just it tasted good and you didn't think about it. it well, was just, it's all about, I mean, this is where the food industry is so, I mean, I talk about it in my book, Food Facts, but the yeah. food industry is so strategic about how it advances its mission and goals. If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here. Irritable bowel is when you have symptoms of bloating or gas, distension, constipation, diarrhea, where your bowel is just irritable. Dairy, another big problem. And that can be caused by the lactose, which causes bloating and gas, but it may